Clark Booth was at the garden for yesterday's disappointing finish. Here is his report. On came the ghosts at the start, purporting to represent the ghastly prospects of the Sixers. Was there ever a game more conceded by so many, only to be lost when it was played? Goaded by the Celtics, the great green crowd did its part, but it was only moments deep in the game when it became clear that it would take more than that to gag the Sixers this day. There would be no resemblance to the team that wilted so pitifully Friday night. We recognized that we had blown that game uh, and that our backs were against the wall, but I don't think that we felt like it was all over. You know, I think that we felt like it's going to be, it, we're going to have to climb the mountain with uh, 20 extra pounds now, but uh, we can still climb the mountain. Boston was astir in the Sixers only very briefly at the start of the second period, savoring a lead for only some fleeting seconds at the end of this Larry Bird break that made it 32-31. Very quickly, the Sixers were back in charge to stay, Playing with the poise and precision all the world had expected from the Celtics this day, it was really a magnificent Philadelphia effort. Well, everybody had wrote us off, but that's a bad feeling to have when everybody, you're going in to play a big game, and if you win, it's good. If you don't, you know, everybody's what we expected that of them. It, it, it's, it's a great feeling. It would have been one hell of a burden to carry for a long, long time, wouldn't it? Whole damn summer. <laughs> Whole summer, and then some more. The key stretch came midway through the third period. Suddenly, the Celtics had the lead down to two points. The alarms were sounding for the Sixers. But here, Tony hit his biggest shot, the cool jumper he couldn't land to save himself Friday night. Danny Ainge then proceeded to throw the ball away on the next two Celtic possessions, both times the Sixers converted, and it would never get close again, thanks to the Andrew Tony shooting show, which was really something. I felt that I had to be very aggressive on offense because I really was uh, hesitant. Uh, Friday night, and uh, I didn't play as well as I wanted to. And during the season, you're gonna have a bad game like that. So I just came out uh, a bit aggressively, and it was really moving into the flow and the rhythm of the game early. It was the great Julius Irving who put away the last doubts about the Sixers' character with a couple of nerveless bombs in the last seconds of the third period. Thereafter, the Celtics would never get closer than nine. You know, you have to give them a lot of credit because they played they played an excellent game under uh, uh, tremendous adversity. Uh, we have nothing to be ashamed of. There's no reason for, the, for this team to hold their heads down because I feel like we had a hell of a year this year. You know, you hate to go out there and, and play as hard as you possibly can and lose. We know everybody gave it their all and lost, and uh, if we're going to be ashamed of any of that, uh, we got a bunch of losers on this team, which I know we don't, and uh, we're not ashamed. We'll put our heads high and just say a better team beat us. There would be one last thrilling moment at the very end when in the tribute to the 76ers, the crowd chorus to beat L.A. How'd you like that beat L.A. thing, Julius? Uh, yeah, it was pretty cute. <laughs> Thank you. loud to see you on Sunday, though. <laughs> they have so many great players on their team and so many good players that uh, you have to be, uh, to a degree, you have to be happy, happy that the situation happened. And not happy that we got beat, but just happy for them and the fact that uh, they might have some of the monkey off their backs. There's some fact that they came back, they played a great game when they had to in Boston Garden. So the ghosts are dispelled and the monkey's been chased. The Sixers can live with themselves again. But through it all, the great doctor remained remarkably calm, and people wondered why he wasn't doing somersaults. You know, I'm very, very happy inside, and, and uh, I don't mind uh, saying it, but I'm not going to brag about it. You know, uh, this is a job. I'm a professional. Uh, I love to play, you know, win or lose. I like winning a lot better than losing. Uh, but uh, somersaults, uh, you, know, uh, you know, that's not, that's not within my uh, uh, grasp. I, I don't think I can go that far. He is quite a gentleman, as are enough of these sixes to make the result rather just. So people left without quibbling, and they took with them the sure memory of a long and rousing season. This is Clark Bush reporting.